Dr. Hammond, thank you very much. In juvenile cases, it's wonderful to have the help of an expert psychologist like yourself. I was glad to be of assistance to you. I wish I could add a psychologist to my staff permanently. Well, whoever it might be, I'm sure the psychologist would like that. You know, you work well with one. You have that rare understanding. By the way, if I may give some free advice, you ought to relax a little more. You're working yourself much too hard. Well, as it is, I'm three days behind schedule now, Dr. Hammond. Oh, please. Call me Laura. All right. Uh, Laura. <laughs> but really, you should slow down a little. Take some time off. I know it. I've even toyed with the idea of sending myself up for 30 days. <laughs> That's a little legal joke. <laughs> you may laugh, Judge, but you could use a little relaxation. If you were one of my patients, I'd advise you to take the rest of the day off. I know, but that's impossible. I still have four appointments. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm afraid I've upset your schedule. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Dr. Hammond. I, I mean, Laura. I wish I could take your advice uh, about relaxing, but you see, I have clients that have made appointments, regardless of how nervous and tired and... <laughs> 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 yes. <clears throat> Goodbye. Oh, she's right. Uh, Miss Bromley. Yes, sir? Uh, will you cancel the rest of my appointments? I'm going home to relax. There, I think we've got all the names now. Good. If we sell them all tickets, we'll make this the best affair our club ever held. Let's start with Charlotte. She always buys tickets for everything. Right. Charlotte is first on the list. Say, Joan, mm -hmm. that couch, has it always been there? Huh? I mean, haven't you ever tried the couch somewhere else? Well, now, what's wrong with it there? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it's, well, sort of usual. What do you mean? I mean, it's not unusual. Maybe that's what makes it usual. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I'm trying to criticize or anything. It's just that I like to rearrange my furniture from time to time, and you never do. It's such fun. Come on, let's do it now. Now? Sure, I'll give you a hand. Well, it might freshen the room up at that. It will. You take that in. Uh, it'll you look, look good, good by, by the, the fireplace. <laughs> by, by the, the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you, you win, win by, by the, the wall. <laughs> I'll toss you for it. I'll take heads. Right. Heads, I win. <laughs> by the wall. Okay. By the way, what's on the other side? I'm afraid to look. <laughs> Well, what do you know, a two-headed horse? <laughs> Just for that, you get your choice. Never mind. By the wall. By the wall. Oh. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Joan. That table, I think we ought to move it. And try, let's try it in the alcove. It should Just look wonderful. In the alcove? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Oh, and Joan, bring the little table back in here to put on the end of the sofa. Yeah, that should look and I saw a thing in a magazine last month. You'd love it. Let's try the chair that way, over here in the hall. Yeah. Oh, and now listen, Joan. Let's move the sofa right back into the corner. Right back Oh, it should the... look charming that way. Just about. And move the little table over to the arm. Now, let's see. I think these two chairs should be reversed. Let's move this chair over here, Joan. Yeah. Now, let's see. Let's move the easy chair on this side. Easy chair. Jimmy, it isn't easy. Oh, it's yes, this is going to look wonderful. And Joan, bring the little table for between the two. Oh, well, we did it. Now, just look at your room, Joan. Doesn't it look wonderful? Well, it took a lot of work and a lot of effort, but now that it's finished, there's one thing I have to admit. It looked a lot better the other way. Joan. I'm only kidding you, Mabel. I think it looks beautiful like this. Really, I do. Well, come on.
Come on, we gotta get going. We have lots of tickets to sell today. Joni! I'm home? Charlotte's living room, I had to come right back here. Why, she had the couch facing the fireplace and a chair like that over in the corner, and it looked just perfect. Oh, Joan, I think it looks nice this way. Yeah, but not as nice as Charlotte's. And as long as I'm changing it, I might as well do it right. Come on, give me a hand. All right. <laughs> uh oh What's the matter? I can't straighten up. I think I got a case of couch crouch. <laughs> back. Oh. Oh, but it was worth it, though. Doesn't the room look beautiful now? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, come on. We've got to get over to Helen Randolph. We've got lots of tickets to sell. Okay. Here you are. Goodbye, you crazy, mixed-up bunch of furniture. <laughs> Joni, is that you? Is that... Oh. Oh. Dr. Hammond, this is Bradley Stevens. Uh, you remember what you told me today about relaxing? Well, I've, I've got a real problem now. Yeah, I, uh, I think my furniture keeps moving. But I, I took a nap. That's when it uh, moved again. Uh, look, I, I, I've got to see you as, as, uh, as soon as possible. But uh, what'll I do in the meantime? Oh, go, go back to sleep. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll try that. Goodbye, Laura. There. This is how Helen Randolph had her place, and it was simply darling. Now, look, Joe, you've got to make up your mind. Do you like it like Helen Randolph's or like Charlotte's or the way we had it first? Well... You can't keep moving furniture every half hour, or at least I can't. Now, which way do you like best? Well, Mabel, I hate to say this, but... Now, don't tell me you like it the original way. Okay, I won't tell you, but that's the way I like it. I give up <laughs> a whole afternoon wasted for nothing. Oh, but it wasn't for nothing. Now I know that my furniture was right all along. <laughs> well, come on, we've got tickets to sell. Oh. <laughs> what about the furniture? Oh, I'll put it all back later. I'm not back in an hour. Start moving without me. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh, I'm sick. Oh, Dr. Hammond, see. Hello, Laura. Laura, the 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 the, the furniture, the furniture, it, it, it just moved again. Yeah, I I I've got to see you see you right away. It's it, it, it's worse than before. Well, I I just hope my wife doesn't find out about it. She'll be so upset. That, Oh, I gotta hang up. Things are moving again. I'll get my hat. I'll, I'll be right over. Hello, 
child ever. Oh. Tony. Oh, you startled me. Well, I'm sorry, dear. Is everything all right? Well, certainly, certainly. Why, why, did, why did you ask? Well, honey, you looked at the lamp and what you were doing at the mantel and the couch. Well, I, I was just uh, trying to kill a moth. You see, it was flying around here somewhere. And there it is. No! <laughs> what? Why don't you sit down, Brad, and try to relax? Well, I guess you're right about my working too hard. One minute the furniture's over here, and the, the next minute it's in another place. You're obviously suffering from some sort of inner conflict. The moving furniture merely denotes an unconscious desire to get away from your present surroundings. Well, I do spend a lot of time at home. Brad, do sit down. I'd advise you to get away from the house. Give yourself a change of scenery. Even get away from your wife occasionally. My wife? Well, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything bothering me that badly. Obviously, there is something. You'll admit that for the rest of us, furniture does not move by itself. That's a good point. I have a patient in a minute, but I think we should discuss this further. I'd like to help you. Not as a patient, as a friend. Well, that's very kind of you. Let's see. I don't have any time today. Oh, this evening I'll be taking a drive down to the seashore. Why don't you come along and we can discuss your problem then? Inform This evening? You must catch these things quickly. Why, in your nervous condition, you might even sentence an innocent man. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Tonight at 8, then. By the way, Brad, I wouldn't mention this to your wife just yet. It might cause an emotional disturbance for her. Oh, all right, Doctor. Uh, maybe if I just took some sulfur and molasses. I've been thinking it over, dear, and I've run into these same symptoms before. What you're suffering from is a familiar old disease known as husbanditis. You've got a restless husband on your hands, Joni. I think he's trying to hide something from you. Cherchez la femme. Cherchez la femme? Don't be silly. He keeps it right in his medicine chest. Uses it after shaving. He doesn't hide it. Cherchez la femme? Exactly. Find the woman. Oh, well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard in my life. Another woman in Brad's life? Why, the only other woman in Brad's life is his mama. Joan, I tell you, you can't trust any man. The minute you take your eye off them, they start to roam. They're like a lot of buffalo, always looking for new pastures. Yeah, and when they find out where the deer and the antelope play, they want to get in on the game. Oh, but not my Brad. <laughs> He's no buffalo. It's just the way his robe fits. Oh, you can't make me believe that there's another woman in Brad's life. Joan, I hate to say this, but I've been through it. I know all the signs. First, they try to pull the wool over your eyes. Then, when they think they've got you fooled, they come home one night and they say, Darling, I'm sure you won't mind, but I'm going out with the boys this evening. Believe me, I... Hello, oh, hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, Mabel. Hi, Brad. How are you? Fine. Uh, uh, say, darling. Yes? Uh, I hope you won't mind, but I'm going out with the boys this evening. <laughs> Do you know, Brad, I thought I heard you say that you're going out with the boys this evening. Well, the next time I go swimming, I gotta make sure all the water is out. <laughs> well, lover, that's what I said. I said I'm going out with the, uh, boys. Well, honey, if you'd... Rather go out with the boys. Well, honey, don't put it that way just because I want to get out of the house for an evening. Besides, if, if I don't show up, the, the fellas will be disappointed. Name them. I, I, I mean, which fellas? Well, there's, there's Charlie. He, he called me at the office today, and he said that he'd be free tonight. Oh, yeah? Well, Charlie can't go out with you because he's spending the evening with a sick friend. Well, if, if Charlie can't make it, then, then I'll go out with, uh, with, with Henry. Henry is the sick fiend, the friend. Well, if they can't make it, I'll go off someplace by myself. Ye no lob. What? 
baloney. <laughs> I said, on the way home, darling, just stop and pick up a couple of pounds of baloney. <laughs> yes, well, I'll, I'll be running along, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mabel. Bye, Brad. I'll, uh, just be... Have a nice time. Don't just stand there. Put on your coat. Put on my coat? What for? Well, you're going after him, aren't you? Find out if he told you the truth. Well, I wouldn't think of following Brad. If he says he's going out alone, that's good enough for me. Well, what do you think I am? One of those suspicious wives that doubts her husband? I better not let him get too much of a head start. <laughs> You know, uh, Laura, it was a lucky day for me when you walked into my office. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. I feel it was a lucky day for me, too, Bert. You know, there's a lovely place to dance at the end of the pier. Uh, up there? Uh-huh. Show it. <laughs> <laughs> we judges aren't much for dancing. Much for... Oh, look at this. One of these machines. You know, I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid. <laughs> Like the one exactly when I <laughs> oh. oh, here we are. Look what it says. You will meet a beautiful redhead who will alter the course of your life. And that's right, you did alter the course of my life, Laura. <laughs> did I, Brad? Tell me more. Shall we sit down on the bench? Uh, yes. Ah. I've been thinking. Thinking about what? Joan. <laughs> Poor kid is at home alone. Doesn't know where I am or even who I'm out with. Laura. What's the matter, Brad? Things are moving again. Just when I thought I was cured, that machine started to move. Now, Brad, you must relax. Rest your head on my shoulder. Well. Look, a fortune machine. Let's see if we should get married. Oh, these machines are a lot of bugs. Oh, come on, Dick. Oh, all right. Within a year, you will have 11 children, all girls. Oh, Dick, did you hear that? Dick! Oh, what's the matter with that young fella? <laughs> oh, Ma, look here. Land sakes. <laughs> it's one of them fortune telling things. Let's put a nickel in and get our fortunes told. Okay, by me, Ma. <laughs> I always was a sport. <laughs> Here I'm going to meet a beautiful blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Put another nickel in. It certainly has been a wonderful evening for me. Yeah. What's the matter? Must be broke. Oh. <laughs> Says here I'm going to meet a gorgeous brunette. <laughs> Give me a quarter mile. I want to hit the jackpot. You just calm down, Edgar. Hmm. You probably come along with me. <laughs> but now listen. All I Hi, babe. Hi. <laughs> well, I guess I better give it some oil.
<laughs> and that's why you were hiding in that fortune telling machine, because you thought I was out with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Brad? Running to a psychologist just because I moved the furniture a few times. <laughs> Joan, what are you thinking? Uh, oh. Huh? Hmm? Oh, oh, well, I, I, I was thinking, Brad, that, well, Dr. Hammond did such a fine job for you, I, I'd like to go see her myself. What for? Uh, for Mabel. Mabel? Yes, a very close friend of Mabel's has a husband another woman is trying to steal. Oh, well, that's awful. I, I think Dr. Hammond would be able to help in a situation like that. Well, that's exactly the way I figured, Brad. I think I ought to phone Dr. Hammond for an appointment. Well, I'll do it right away, dear, before that other woman gets a chance to steal that poor sap. <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly call him a poor sap, Brad. I... <laughs> yes, I guess I better phone her about the poor sap. <laughs> Uh, Joan, I'll go in with you so I can introduce you. No, dear, you sit right here. I'll be right out. Hello. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you for giving me an appointment right away, Dr. Hammond. That's all right. Just tell me your problem, Mrs. Um... Oh, well, my name really isn't important. I'm here for a friend. Oh, I see. You see, uh, my friend's husband recently met a woman. And this woman is trying to steal my husband. And that is my friend's husband, not mine. Because I'm not my friend, and she's not me. So my husband couldn't be hers, or hers mine. Did you see, doctor? Would you please lie down on the couch over there? Yeah. You know, I, I just wanted to ask you one simple question. Could you possibly forget that you're a psychologist for a moment? Woman to woman, what would you do if another woman was trying to steal your husband? Well... Speaking not as a psychologist, but as a woman, confidentially, I'd punch her right in the nose. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hammond. That's all I want to know. <laughs> oh, honey, that Dr. Hammond is just wonderful. Only one session. And not only my friend feels better, I feel a lot better, too. <laughs> I Mary Joan, what a girl, what a world, what a light. Oh, I Mary Joan, what a mind, love is blind, what a wife. Gideon Gay, all day she keeps my heart laughing, never know where. 